The OLIF25 procedure is a muscle sparing approach through an oblique corridor to access multiple levels of the lower lumbar spine. When considering an oblique approach, we must consider the anatomy, specifically the peritoneum, the psoas muscle, the sympathetic chain, the ureter and kidney, the lumbar plexus, the vasculature in the lumbar region, and the anterior longitudinal ligament, or ALL. Let's start with the peritoneum, a thin membrane lining the abdominal cavity containing the intestines. Anatomical concerns with the peritoneum are tearing the membrane or perforating the bowel or interabdominal contents. In an OLIF 25 procedure, the patient should be placed in the right lateral decubitus position to approach the oblique corridor. The peritoneal contents will fall anteriorly due to gravity. The finger or blunt instrument enters the retroperitoneal space from a more anterior position pointed posteriorly to skive the top of the peritoneum. The peritoneal contents can now be swept anteriorly, creating the oblique corridor. The finger or blunt instrument protects the peritoneum as the first probe is inserted. The psoas muscle in the lumbar spine contributes to hip joint flexion and rotation. In traditional trans psoas approaches, dilation and retractor placement through this muscle can lead to muscle trauma and potential nerve injury. Stretching a muscle by jackknifing the patient and surgical table and dilating through the muscle can result in transient postoperative neural complications. OLIF procedures do not require jackknifing of the surgical table as OLIF is performed at a trajectory outside the anterior portion of the psoas muscle. This trajectory is also away from the nerves of the posterior aspect of the psoas. The lumbar nervous plexus crosses the midpoint of the L4-5 disc space. Most often seen traversing midpoint of disc are the femoral nerve and the obturator nerve. Anatomical concerns include injury to these nerves, particularly from compression and stretching during the opening of a trans-psoas retractor, which can lead to post-operative neural complications. OLIF-25 has a trajectory away from posterior nerves, including the femoral nerve. The genitofemoral nerve exits the psoas muscle at approximately the L2 disc space and may be visualized during the OLIF-25 procedure. If visualized, it can be mobilized temporarily to allow for entry into the disc space. Kidneys and ureters are part of the urinary system that delivers urine to the bladder. A concern for retroperitoneal procedures is location of the kidneys and ureter and potential injury. As part of preoperative planning, surgeons should evaluate for abnormalities of the kidneys, including a history of a kidney transplant, a horseshoe kidney, or a pelvic kidney. The ureter is usually attached to the peritoneum and will move anteriorly with the peritoneal contents as they are swept forward. Retractors may be used to directly visualize and protect the ureter. The sympathetic chain consists of ganglia on both sides of the spine and may be injured when approaching obliquely. If visualized, the sympathetic chain may be moved anteriorly using a blunt dilator or kitner to move soft tissue from the anterior psoas to the ALL. A small percentage of patients may experience transient lower extremity symptoms, such as leg warmness and swelling of the left leg if the chain is injured. Lumbar region vasculature primarily consists of the great vessels, the aorta and vena cava, and multiple segmental vessels and tributaries. Anatomical concerns are irregular vasculature, location of the iliolumbar vein, high bifurcation, and transitional anatomy. In the OLIF-25 procedure, look at preoperative axial MRIs to evaluate for irregular vasculature. Positioning the patient laterally, left side up, increases the size of the corridor between the psoas and aorta as the great vessels move to the right. The preferred starting position of the probe on the disc space is anterior to the psoas and away from the major vessels. An OLIF-25 procedure works away from the peritoneum and interior vascular structures. The iliolumbar vein may be observed in the L4-5 disc space of patients with transitional anatomy. For these patients, direct visualization is recommended to identify iliolumbar vein location. The ALL is attached to each vertebral body inferiorly and superiorly at the end plates level. OLIF-25 allows direct visualization of the ALL, and surgeons may leave the ligament intact or release the ALL for greater lordosis. The OLIF-25 procedure enables an approach away from the nerves of the posterior aspect of the psoas and works away from the peritoneum and anterior vascular structures.
The OLIV 25 procedure allows direct visualization of vital structures so they can be mobilized and protected.